strikers in this division. I'm one of the best strikers in the world. Strike. Oh, Ah! That is it! Rafael Fazeev finishes ah. Brad Renault! Rafael Adam Fazeev! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're at it. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Matt is back. We only missed one episode together because of July 4th. Hope everyone had a great Independence Day. And uh, we have Michael Johnson in the waiting room. We have Rafael Faziv uh, coming on today to promote uh, uh, Dos Anjos uh, Faziv on uh, Saturday night. But Matt, uh, I-, I texted with you a little bit. and Yes. You seemed like you were having a great time. Oh, I sent you the picture with me with the VR? Yeah, it's exactly what I would expect you to it's do. It's exactly, yeah. I, I, that's what I call making the most of it. Yeah. I sent Jimmy a picture of me, and I had my leg in a wrap that goes filled with ice. And yeah. uh, and you were nude. It was so weird. No, no, I had my shirt off. I wasn't totally. You nude, were naked, but I was fl- from the top up, the waist up. But you know, I was having a good time. Yes, uh, Jimmy. Listen, really quick before we talk to the great Michael Johnson. Um, either I have been working on my tan, which I have. Yep. Or. I noticed it. You yep. are the new member of Twilight, uh, the sequel, or uh, Interview with the Vampire. Are they doing a reboot? What, Jimmy, Sunlight, are I you know. afraid of it? And have you seen it lately? No, Matt, I know what you're saying. I'm looking at it right now, and I don't know. I'm going to change the background for one second. I just want to see if this has anything. You're like a grown-up Eddie Munster. Um, is it the background or no? Well, uh, dude, all I know is I'm not, I'm protected. I'm from a choke. I'm, but you look like a little vampire. You look like a, I'm like, Jimmy, you look great. No, I don't know what you're right, man. You look, I'm very tan right now. I'm not doing anything. I'm a bum, a fucking bum. I'm sipping espresso and I'm doing exercise in my yard. Well, then you're doing something. You're, you're actually, you're right. I am doing something. But my point is this. You don't look bad. For, I, you look a look. I don't think you're getting enough sun, though. No, I, I don't know why. I'm actually tanner. I don't know why I'm so white. I don't know why. Either that or I got a fucking tan. All right. Let's I'm bring like, Michael Johnson ass. in. It has, it, it has nothing to do with the conversation. Oh, why am I? I'm not showing you a tan line. We'll bring Michael in. I, I, I don't know what to say about your abs. I feel like I'm shitting on you. I'm not. I love No, you. I noticed the same thing. As soon as we sign it's I, a this new, though, I, I, this I, new backdrop. It makes me look like a vampire. And I saw how dark and healthy your background is. And I, I think I'm washed out because my black shirt even looks washed out. I don't know exactly why. Yeah, you had a chance there. You, you, had, a, you had a chance to actually give me a compliment. You, you, did, you really, not only didn't you, oh, well, you have a, no, don't, don't put that in your crap. I'm saying you look good. No, I'm not, you're saying my, first of all, you said the background looked good. You got a nice, healthy, I go, oh, he's going to say I've been getting sun. Maybe I've been watching my weight. I'm at like 195 today. It was great. Uh, I thought you were going to go that route, but you go, oh, you have a nice, healthy background. Fucking, I got your fucking background right here. Yeah, hold on. Even with a different camera, I was hoping it was the camera. I'm like, oh, I'll change the camera. Nope, Listen it's me. What I want you to do right now, fuck the cameras. Fuck the cameras. I want you right now on air to walk in front of a mirror. It's holy fucking. See the fucking. Right. I'm sure you you'd have a reflection, Jimmy. Is what I'm saying. Good to see you, man. Long time no see. Yeah, yeah, man. How you been? It's been a while. I uh, mean, I dude, I listen. I'm not gonna. I haven't talked to you in a while. I don't want to start off by bitching, but I literally got a knee replacement. Don't look at me like an old man, Michael. I got a knee okay. replacement, Michael. I I was walking so fucked up that uh, just last Tuesday in the city, I have a new knee. I'm following in the great ste- the, the great footsteps of uh, Michael Bisping. And anyway, I'm that's how I'm doing. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing good, man. Uh, you know, weight cuts doing good. I'm just out here chilling. Just had a little breakfast with the team. Uh, just gonna relax for the rest of the day and, and get ready for Saturday. It's nice to have you on. Right, right before you jumped on, Matt was standing up, showing off his abs 
So I'm happy you stepped in. He was just reconfirming that he is still in really good shape. How, how are you feeling uh, mentally? I, I know I, I was watching the uh, what, what, what the thing that they just released on you on, on YouTube. I was watching, uh, is it the Untold Story of a Fighter or something it's called? Yeah, yeah, the uh, Mother, Mother Brothers. Yes. And, uh, and you, 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 you're feeling more positive now. You said you kind of went into like a, a rough place at one point. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And, uh, you know, I'm still, you know, kind of there because, um, you know, we all know, you know, one fight, one win is not going to change much. You know what I mean? We still are on the same path, still on the same roadway and, um, still gotta, gotta get out of these places. But as far as like the mental positivity side, you know, um, that's all we can do is kind of stay, you know, positive in, in, inside our minds. Cause, um, you know, that's one thing that we can't control with us. I'm just trying to, you know, sit back and stay grounded and positive and look at the, the outlook on things. Well, against Patrick, you looked so good. You were so fast. Your punches were so uh, accurate. You had to be happy with how good you looked in that last fight. You were coming off uh, a, a skid, a few fights you, you had lost. But then to, be, to bounce back and look as good as you did, that has to make you feel more confident and, and ready. Yeah, yeah, that part does. Um, you know, I've done a great thing with my team down here at Denver, back to Florida. And, um, it, it was just a time where I really needed to get healthy, get the surgeries out of the way, and um, get back to being how Michael Johnson really fights, you know, being healthy, being good, being active, and um, being comfortable in there. You know, and that's the thing, um, seeing everything uh, and enjoying myself. You know, maybe I needed to have it, a risk of it all being taken away so I can appreciate it more and then um, get back to, you know, handling my business. Well, that's what it is, really. I mean, like Jimmy was just saying, your last fight with Alan Patrick, it wasn't just like, oh, man, I squeaked by with a decision. I mean, you had a fucking, it was a beautiful KO. And it's, it, listen, anytime you win in there, it's sweet. It's There's not one time where you win, it's like, ah, oh, that, that didn't feel good. But, like you said, you were, you were going to, you know, another loss would have been a hard, that would have been hard to take. Yeah. So just to get that monkey off your back, man, how, that must have been orgasmic, no? Fuck, right, right. come yeah. on, Michael, let's relive it. I know we got a fight coming up, but shit, <laughs> that was fucking awesome. I was jumping up and down. Fuck, yeah, Michael. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was good, definitely or, or, orgasmic in that sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it, it was just like a weight off my shoulders, you know, a weight off my chest to really get in there. And, I mean, fuck, the guy from the media told me I haven't won in four years or some shit like that, he told me. So I was like, damn, I'm gonna put it, it wasn't that long, but you, you know, you put it that way, like, yeah, okay. So it made like three years, some crazy shit, you know, some unbelievable shit he told me, but uh, you put it that way, I was like, oh, wow. You know, that, it's incredible to come in here and get a win. You know, I really needed that for um, myself, my family, my life, my career, everything, you know, that was very well needed. Well, Michael, did he say that to you before the fight or after? After. Oh, okay. I was like, what a dick thing to say before a fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a, yeah, yeah, a shitty yeah. move. Right. Yeah. Hey, when, when you were going through that, before you were able to, to, to kind of, I guess you write the ship, was there anything happening for you mentally in the cage that was different? Like, were you doubting yourself or were you not doing what you wanted to do? Was there anything mental going on that was, uh, was, it, was it messing with you in the cage? Uh, no, not mentally. I think um, everything for that prior to the cage is more physical. You know, my health wise, um, I wasn't able to do certain things that I was thinking about. You know, like my mind wanted to do it, but my body just wasn't reacting the way it needed to. And, uh, you know, that was very important to get fixed and, you know, get back to being as healthy as possible. How's, uh, how's Henry Hoof? You're working with Henry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Henry's great. He's been on his way now. Um, you know, everything's good, you know, keeping a, uh, you know, the ship selling. Now, it's funny, Michael, because I'm a guy that's been around for a while, so I've seen guys come and go, and, like, to me, I, I, you know, I'm an old school guy, so I still look at you like a guy that just broke on the scene, but, you know, I was fighting, oh, it sounds funny, I was fighting at your age, no, but around 35, 36, guys started coming at me like, you know, you're the uh, third oldest on the card, and this and that, what do you think about after, and I'm like, like, holy fuck, how did that happen? I feel like I just got here. But, uh, you know, I know you don't have your, I don't think you have yourself as a certain number. Some guys do. 
But uh, what are you thinking about afterwards? Or are you are you playing it by fight at a time? Or and do you have something set up uh, afterwards? Yeah, I got some things set up. You know, I just um, started really diving into you know real estate and, and getting things going on, on that end of the spectrum. But at the end of the day, um, I'm still a fighter. You know, my body's healthy. I'm I'm riding this till the wheels fall off. You know, and so my body says no. Um, then I, I'm in here. You know what I mean, I pretty much started in the UFC. I'm going to finish here, and I, I'm looking at the next five to ten years. You know, taking full advantage. And we've talked before, as a lot of fighters fight much longer than maybe years ago. And you have to be encouraged when you see, again, the examples I've used so many times are DC and Glover Teixeira and these guys. It's got to make you feel like, yeah, there's, there's a few years left. Like, I, I don't have to wrap this up anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of years left. And, uh, you know, like I said, my mentality is good in a spot where I'm focused on being successful in these years. Um, taking full advantage of, of the fight game, taking full advantage of everything I need to do uh, to last for these years. And um, like I said, I, I'm in it to the end. And by the way, it's called The Last Chance. Uh, anybody who wants to watch this on Michael, The Untold Story, it's really good. Um, and, and it's very informative. It's like 15, 16 minutes. So it's not like you're committing two hours to watch. I like when things, I guess maybe our attention spans have gotten so much shorter as we've gotten more technologically, but anything that's 20 minutes or under, I'm, is perfect for me. It's yours. What is What is it again? Tell me about it really quick. It's um, called, so the, uh, uh, oh, you go ahead, Mike, sorry. No, it's, uh, so the Mulligan brothers, you know, they're, they're huge on um, YouTube with a lot of um, inspirational, motivational sports and everything at, uh, over from the UK. And, uh, you know, they reached out to me prior to the fight. And, um, you know, they were down in Miami and we filmed a full episode and a skit. And, you know, they called it the last chance. And, you know, I just talked about, um, you know, coming out of the you know, dark hole I was in, you know, these last four fights, losing them in a row and being in a, in a bad place. You know, and um, they talk about me coming out of that and me looking at this like a great comeback story history. Yes, I, I that got me motivated. Now, yeah, Michael, when you were in that place, when you were in that place, what did people do that they meant to be helpful that wasn't helpful? Because I think a lot of times when someone's going through something, we, we want to help them out, but we don't know exactly what is the right thing and what's the wrong thing. What, what are things that people would do that meant well that just didn't help you at all? I mean, <laughs> nothing. You know, I mean, it kind of feels like, um, it kind of feels like, um, Everyone, you know, like disappeared, kind of back turned on you, you know, and um, you're just like left and stuck with like, huh, what the hell am I going to do here? You know, I'm trying to figure out ways to get to the next day almost. But, um, you know, um, luckily for me, I had, you know, a great team and great support. I could always come to the gym and, you know, feel that, that love and that support and guys pushing me to get better and get out of this hole. So that was definitely the help I, I needed from those guys. Okay, so you, you feel like people who you thought might be there for you kind of turned away or just went on and did other things? Yeah, I, absolutely. You know, and, and Matt, you probably know this as well as any of us. Um, you know, when when you're good in a good place, everybody wants to be your friend. You know what I mean? And, oh, and shit. You fall off a little bit, and all the people that weren't meant to be there fall off. And, you know, like I said, it was almost a blessing in disguise that happened because now I'm uh, no baggage clear-headed and I can hey. move around a lot easier without a bunch of people hanging on me and also like the cage you can't disguise the truth like uh you know you people come back around you're only as good as your last fight that means you're fucking awesome Michael Johnson because that last fight was awesome so all of a sudden these people that weren't as real the last how many fights all of a sudden they start coming back hey man I knew you had it in you did you really motherfucker did oh, you yeah. You yeah, just waited for I, now. You did that to motivate me by just not calling me, you cocksucker. I'm with you, Michael. Yeah. I get it, dude. I get it. That's that's so, motivating so, in itself. It, exactly, it is. It's motivating to to get back on my shit, get back on that path, and um, the hell with these people, dismiss them all. You know, like I got my core people around me, and uh, you know that's all I need. You know, guys that I knew would never turn their back on me. You know, they stuck through those four fights losing, and they were there every time. You know, just going with me and um, just being as positive as I am. And um, we'll be out of this hole sooner or later and back to the top. And I have no problem being up there with a few people at all. 
and I'm sure you're expecting a stand-up uh, fight with uh, with uh, Malarkey. Uh, you know, he he. You know. Nah, it's too ain't trying to stand up for me. <laughs> <laughs> I I I've, I've expected him to I'm expecting him to come in, throw some strikes, and um try to jump in on my legs and make it a, a grimy, gritty fight. You know, try to hold me against the cage. Um, if I mean, if he's wanting a stand up fight, by all means, let's do it. You know, that's where I shine. I'm not being a I'm not being a, like a an immature asshole, but what does malarkey mean? Isn't it? Because when people say you're full of malarkey, I'm not attacking the guy's name. It's, it's a nice way of saying bullshit. But bullshit. the guy's last yeah. name is bullshit. Like, this guy is, <laughs> listen, Michael, you better be, this guy's got to be talking. This guy's probably been fucked with his whole life. I don't even know what malarkey means, but I know if somebody goes, hey, yo, Matt, you're full of malarkey. I go, oh, yeah, are we crossing swords? I know they're starting some sh It's not a compliment. You know what oh, I mean? Boy, it's a bunch of malarkey bullshit. Yeah, it is. So he's definitely, um, he's definitely tough. You know, he's he's had to put up with that last thing his whole life. So for sure, he's uh, used to some shit. I think that was actually Biden's campaign slogan. He had like on the side of his bus or something like no malarkey. It was some. It's an old man's way of saying it though. Like nobody under sixty says malarkey ever. Well, I don't know, man. It's it's not a good thing. But hey, that that's motivating too. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, Listen, yeah. I, I only know is I'm happy to see the Michael fight again this weekend. I'm fucking excited. Yeah, and you wanted to fight Cowboy too, um, and he and he had the Joe Lazone fight that did, that didn't work out, and then he finally fought uh, Jim Miller. Uh, what did what did you think of his retirement? And were you disappointed at all? Yeah, um, I don't like to really see people retire after losses. So um, yeah, that was a little bit of a of a disappointing thing, but um disappointed as in to like not get the fight like no not by all means i'm happy for cowboy man he retired um he's gonna live his life now and um go on to greater things and uh I, i'm excited for what he's given the sport you know i just been training with cowboy myself and um that was a fight where i knew it would have been a great one for the fans a great one for both of us and it's just one that we've been around for so long and we never fought so you know that was a guy that i wanted to fight and um yeah, it might happen uh, on a movie screen or somewhere later, but you know, not 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 the guy. When he when he when he was talking to Joe too after that fight, he said, "I just I don't love it anymore." He was saying, "I don't love it anymore." Uh, do you have those? I always wondered, like you said, if a guy steps down after a loss right away, is that something that will pass in a few days? That I don't love it anymore, or is it something like win, lose, or draw that was going to happen? Like, have you had that feeling in a cage where you wanted to say, "Look, I don't love this anymore. I want to walk away," but you just didn't. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been kind of close, you know. Cause like I said, I've been I mean I've been in the UFC for twelve, going on thirteen years, been fighting for fifteen. So a lot of it can't get uh, too much when you become too much. But it's literally um, an instant change. Like uh, like do I really love this anymore? And then that other side of me clips back is like, hey, yeah, like this is the life we chose. Like of course we love this. Of course we're gonna continue to do this and fight. So. Um, the training might get to you, the weight cut might get to you, but when you're in that cage, you know, you remember why you love the sport. Jimmy, I, I should have started with this question, but uh, you posted something on your, uh, <laughs> on, your Insta on your Twitter a few months back, which superhero is more likely to steal your girl, Batman or Superman? And Batman <laughs> won. Now, where did, that, where did that come from, Michael Johnson? As a comic book guy, I want to know about that. Yeah, kind of like, um, it, it was just something to, to get, you know, the fans, you know, riled up and get some content and, you know, some discussions going on. My Twitter kind of boosted up. So, um, good one, right? Who, who do you think won? I think Batman won, right? Batman won. Yeah, yeah Batman well, Bat won. They like the dark and brooding type guy. You know? And he's a billionaire. That doesn't hurt. Uh, the fact that Bruce Wayne's a billionaire. But then again, Superman doesn't need money because he could, you know, he flies. Well, I think women would take flight over anything. Yeah, but he'll shatter a pelvis. That's no good. That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> and he has a weakness. You know, so. He has a weakness? I mean, the women could be his kryptonite. That's true. That's true. But uh, he needs Wonder Woman. That's the only... Uh, you know, vagina that could really take it. <laughs> I think. That too probably would be quicker think. to take the girl in third. Yeah, a fucking Amazon. 
All right, listen. We're well, Michael, yes, the opening fight of the uh, main card um, on uh, on Saturday night, uh, Dos Anjos and uh, Fiziev against Jamie Malarkey. And I'm glad you're back on the uh, win side. And uh, good luck on Saturday, man. We just uh, we hope you stick around for a long time. You're always it's always a good fight when you're in a fight. Thank you, guys. And um, yeah, I'm gonna be here until uh, we get back up to the top, and you know, and close out that. Everybody loves a comeback story, bro. It's the best fucking story ever. You're living it. You're fucking living it, Michael Johnson. All right, buddy. Have a great fight. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Take care, man. Hey, you want to see my knee? Yes. Wow. Oh, hello. Wow, they really hello. went in there. Hello, how you doing? There you get a little smiley face the doctor yeah. put on me. Oh, he's silly. He's, he's silly. silly. Oh, look at my look at my foot. How does it feel? How does it feel? Like does it do you feel it right now? Is it numb or is it really in pain? Yeah, I mean, you know what I've been feeling lately, to be honest with you? And I've been I I think I've been handled like a champ. You know, I'm not bitching or nothing. And uh people are like, oh yeah, no, listen, and I'm not out of the woods yet. It's only been a week ago. I still gotta I, I, I'm a lot, I do PT the following uh, a week from yesterday. Next Tuesday, I do. I start my PT with outside yeah. PT. I've been doing shit out, out around the house and what well, they've been telling me. They're, they're impressed with my flexibility and everything. So, uh, you know, I, people are like, oh, you get this done. You, you should do them both because I heard it's so bad. You're not going to want to do another one and fucking relax. It's not that bad at all. I right. think I don't. I, I really don't think I, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm not being a tough guy. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. I mean, dude, I, I got my legs scoped. And I remember I went to Australia for Al and uh, ask any one of those guys, dude, I remember being like, dude, I couldn't walk over there. I think that was worse. And that was a scope. I could not walk. I was like, dude, I asked Ray. I, I was like, dude, I was, I was total cripple. And how, I long, was, how long were you in pain for after a scope? Oh, I, dude, I was, I don't know. But all I know is I couldn't, I couldn't move when I went, I, I couldn't move in Australia. And that was less than three weeks after I got it or two weeks or whatever it was. There's something close, but I figured it was only a scope. I didn't think it was a big deal, but. I did. That was everything before you actually get right this. But uh, you know, like lately, like when I've been getting up, like out of bed and shit at night, which I do now because you know that the pain meds hurt my stomach sometimes. Uh, you know, I, like I guess the blood from going up to down is just that's when it starts to flow back into my leg. I, I, it's, I'm, you know, you see little stars for a second. Sure. You know, you're like you're like you motherfucker. You know, it's like yeah. so. You know, my wife's wakes up to a bald man growling in the middle. <laughs> Honey, you okay? Yeah, I'm good, babe. By the way, Matt, we have not talked since um, the, the fights. Oh, shit, Jimmy. Um, I would like to start... The arm lock you were talking about on the, on the first fight in the prelims. That's what we were about to talk about. Um, no, but we can start there if you wish. Uh, I believe the name is Yulia Stoliarenko. Uh, yes, over Jessica Rose Clark. The uh... All I know is Yulia better not meet a guy named something Gulia, because then she'll be Yulia Gulia, and that's kind of funny. <laughs> Come on. Did you ever see Wedding Singer? Probably not. <clears throat> Adam Sandler goes to the guy, the girl's name is Julia that he likes. It's Drew Barrymore. Right, let me hear it out. Hear it out. So he's she's married some she's married some yuppie guy. So he's Adam Sandler's talking. He's the wedding scene. He doesn't have a, like a really mm-hmm. good job, you know. And he's falling for her. She's falling for him. And he goes, "Oh, your name is your last name is Gulia." He goes, "Oh, he goes, that's kind of funny. Her name is Julia. It should be Julia Gulia." So then the guy goes, well, "Why is that funny?" He's like, "Ah, I don't know." Anyway, aren't you glad I explained <laughs> the joke to you? I just and, so Yulia, Yulia with that arm lock. I'll tell you, Jimmy, I would, it was so, it was, listen. Were you happy when that happened? Well, this is the thing. It was a neon belly uh, arm lock where you, and you put, put somebody puts a neon belly, you get a grip of the arm and then you cr- transfer over. She even pushed her leg between her legs. I used to do that too sometimes. And you put your shin on the opposite side. So you're facing the opposite way and you take a far side arm lock. Okay. So it's, it was, uh, I used it in one of my fights actually. Uh, my, at the Copa Cabana in Manhattan, uh, versus a Jiu Jitsu guy. But it's so beautiful because, you know, it's a basic arm lock that, you know, these are things where guys would be like, all right, well, that's not something you're going to get the best of the world in in a Jiu Jitsu competition. 
But this is why, I, I'll tell you right now, I hardly even watch jujitsu competitions. I like watching it used in combat. Because where you are going to be chill, where there's no a threat of getting struck and you don't have to put your arms out for, it's hard to get the arms up. That become it, it comes out, it has to come out or you're getting fucking drilled in the face. So things in a fight happen differently than they right. do in a, in a regular straight up submission only match with no fear of getting struck. You know what I mean? So I like seeing jujitsu used in combat. I even like the combat jujitsu. I'm starting to like that. But I, I like, because I like keep, I don't see like that guy, but I like keeping it real, Jimmy. Yeah. I like, to, you know, I like to be aware of, of um, managing your distance and whatnot. So my point is, she got her down. It was a very basic arm lock, but damn, I bet you money this. Well, actually, she's known for getting like four first round arm lock finishes. So it's not like, it's not something she's done before, but I'll tell you, it's so beautiful. And um, I'm sorry. Let me look at the card really quick. Uh, her opponent. Jessica Rose Clark. Of course, Jessica Rose Clark. Let's fix, fix that up, guys. Thank you. Her opponent, Jessica Rose Clark. Jimmy, she was fighting great. It, again, until she wasn't. No, until she got that on, takedown with that arm lock. And damn, that, was a, that, thing was a, that thing was a thing of beauty. I showed it to my girls. And they all looked away after because they're like, oh, because the arm looked like it just went in half. It looked like out of a movie. It got totally dislocated right away. So it's like, ah, oh, it's one of those. Like, ah! Right. But anyway, uh, what a great, what a great fight. So let's talk more about the car, Jimmy. I just want to talk uh, uh, Duplicy over uh, T- Tavares. What an incredible fight. That Brad Tavares, Driscus Duplicy fight. Uh, was the opening fight of the prelims fucking incredible? Great, great. Uh, I don't want to say a test for Drew Cassie, but it's uh, Brad is Brad's always proven just to be a tough, tough guy. I mean, yeah, he's a hard guy to put away, too. He's a well rounded, tough guy. Yep. Like, if they want to, I, I don't know, like, he, he, he he's dangerous for everybody. Like, he's one of those guys where I think he could fight up to an ability or even not down to ability, but like, he's. Uh, he could shock you, is what I'm saying. And I think he 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 went in there to win that fight, and he did. Well, I think he did well. I think it was a close. It was a good fight, but damn, it was a though, great but, uh, fight. It was a great fight. Yeah, um, the fact that neither one of those guys got put away was uh, was staggering. Um, I mean, there's so many good fights. Uh, Jalen Turner over over Riddell with that uh, that first round submission. Jalen Turner looked incredible. Uh, of course, we talked about Jim Miller. Uh, subbing uh, Cowboy, and that and, and that was it for uh, for for Cowboy. Yeah, I, I don't want to. I want to talk about Cowboy for a second, only because sure. I know he's got a, you know, he's retiring. But before we do that, with that uh, Jalen Turner, you know, Riddell's not a guy that goes out easily. I mean, no. he just had that war with uh, Hafiel. His last, I think that was his last. No, oh, was that his last fight? Was that Hafiel he fought last? I'll tell you in a second. Hold on. I believe it was. God, I gotta stretch my leg. I'm sorry. Give me, give me one second. Let me uh, see. Yes, I believe it was. Yeah, that was. In I the... mean, and that was a good fight until he got caught to the third round. And by the way, and he was he was up. Riddell was mad that they stopped that. I think, but it was crazy to watch a guy so stunned and kind of out on his feet. Yeah, they 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 did the right thing. He, you know, some guys are almost tough for their too tough for their own good. Yeah, yeah, and a second later, I guess you come back, but that was an incredible, incredibly placed uh, uh, spinning kick. Uh, but but to take so for Jalen Turner to come in there and take him out the way he yeah. did was very 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 impressive. Bad bad poor Matt for Vola doesn't get any credit. He, he I know had, he had a great fight with the fucking tarantula. That was a great fight. That was like a monster movie because the guy's so big and he was. Uh, and that was a great fight, Matty. I, I don't know. That's his I, last loss, by the way, to Favola. Was it real? That's Turner's last loss was to Matt Favola. Yep. I gotta talk to Maddie and find out when he's fighting again. Matt Favol is fun as shit, man. He's yeah. always fucking fun. And he's such a, a great guy, sweetheart of a guy. I always like seeing him around the school. But uh, but anyway, Jalen Turner did fucking amazing. Um, I mean, especially when you look at who he put away. Yeah. You know? And Riddell had the he had the backing of all his guys being on the card with him. Oh yeah, with uh, Volkanovsky, of course, and Adesanya. And, and by the way, uh, before we get to any of those. Alex Barreda, I mean, that, that, I wonder if that's going to be the next fight is going to be him against um, Israel. That was such an impressive 
devastating fight. And you saw his last fight went to decision uh, against Bruno Silva and you're like, uh, uh, Pajeda, yeah. My, 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 yeah, but I, I was re-watching that. That guy was really trying to out-grapple him. So that, I think that was a good telling fight on on how well-rounded he is. Yes, that's and how good is his defense, yes. Yes, that's defense. the biggest question. Is he just going to get taken down and smoked? No. Right. And he gets back up and he's equally as dangerous. So, you know, I'm really impressed with him. And I think that is the fight to make because the, the reason being uh, Israel's just, he, you know, he's running through, he ran through the whole division. Ran through the division. And it bothers me when people question, that they don't question Israel's like like greatness, but like, but they do kind of say, well, yeah, but he lost to, you know, he had tough times where he lost to um, uh, uh, Blahovitz, Jan Blahovitz. Yeah, but he was heavier and he just was, he was out. But like, you know, you talk about, like, I mean, who else is doing that though? It's like some of the greats never went up in weight at all to fight. Yeah. So you got to give the guy credit for trying to challenge himself with a fucking beast like that and even to go through it unscathed. And Blahovitz didn't even beat him up. He won the fight and he laid on him a lot, but he didn't he didn't kick the shit out of him. He was just a bigger dude. They could still be fighting right now. My point is he didn't show he's the better martial artist. He beat him basically on takedowns. And by the way, he sorry, Matt, he also beat guys like Marvin Vittori uh, and Brunson, uh, other guys who are extremely comfortable on the ground. So he's beaten other guys who are good grapplers. It's not like he's never fought a grappler, Hermanson. Israel Adesanya is getting a lot, getting some hate because I think that was like, that was like a lot of barn burners that night. And dude, why? Like, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, well, to get hit, you have to, to hit somebody, you gotta be willing to get hit. Not really, not if you're Israel Adesanya. You can, you can get hit, you can hit somebody and not get hit. I mean, or you could just like, so, I mean, he's so precise and he's kind of levels above that, you know, he's, it's like, he's not playing with them, but he's, he's strategically beating everybody. And then he's doing it right. without putting himself without, without leaving the, without leaving the, the cage with much skin. You know, without, by by the way, so I, I said Hermanson, I meant Gastelum. Uh, I erroneously said uh, Hermanson. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. By the way, and I faulted Cannonier more in that fight, even though Adesanya, I thought Adesanya was at least staying active Cannonier, uh, it just seemed like he didn't know exactly what to do. Um, he was, he seemed like he was a little bit frozen uh, and was setting up too much and didn't seem to realize he was down three or four rounds. Uh, I mean, I, I, Israel's a hard, hard, uh, puzzle to, uh, to figure out, but that's what's, that's what's so intriguing about the Alex Pereira fight because, uh, yeah, Alex is not only is he, he listen, it's not like he beat him in uh outside of the, the the ufc and kickboxing and then he came in here and he lost and he won and he he had beaten everybody he yeah. how many fights do you have two or three two is this the second fight uh this was his third fight all right in and the ufc and he's beaten everybody oh yeah he's three and oh uh, so it's like obviously so my point is hey i think the guy's proven and, and only that short strickland say what you want about it first of all funny as fuck at the press conference i don't give a shit he can be disrespectful, but he's willing to fight. So it's fucking funny. But uh, dude, that guy said the best. He, you know, he lost that fight, but he got on his Instagram or on the social media. I saw the clip of him being like, look, I never claimed to be the best fighter, man. I don't regret shit. You know, it was, I went in there and you know, he risks it. And then, you know, he bested a lot of good guys. Oh, we have uh, Rafael Fadiz. He did, yeah. I, I thought that he uh, probably standing right in front of him. And he even admitted that I stood in front of one of the best kickboxers. He was, he felt like he was doing really well and he was going to have an easy fight. And he just, you know, he got caught. We have so much more to talk about with the card. I know we're all over the place. That's right. And yes. when we get back, I want to talk about my love for Volkanovski because people are killing me lately. Dude. Because you know why? On the, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, on the on the countdown special, they show me go to Dana. They go, Matt Sarah, UFC Hall of Famer. And I go after the second fight of, of, of Max Max Holloway and, and Volkanovski. Yeah. They have me saying um, to Dana, and I'm not doing this for the camera. I didn't even know they were filming us. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I go, I feel bad for Max. I, I, I give him every round but one and this and that. So yeah. they, you know, so people are tagging me and shit. Take a look. You were right. Max won the second fight. I thought he won it. I thought he won it. But uh, I love Volkanovski. I think the guys, I, I love that fight. I can't wait to talk about his fight. So yes. let's talk to Rafael, Rafael first. Hi, what's up, brother? How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I like your, uh, I like your style, dude. <laughs> yeah because i got little beads on my head you got like a nice like almost like a it's like a hippie vibe but you're such a dangerous man no it's uh it's uh it's 
It's, this one is Arabic. Oh, I like I like that. Now, very comfortable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very comfortable. Yeah, you know, like balls is like uh, so so easy for for everything. <laughs> yes, yes, everything is just hey. How good does it feel? to finally be getting ready to have this fight. Uh, there's been some delays. Uh, you must be happy that it's finally happening. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm really happy. Like, whew, I don't know, I, I can't explain it because, because it's my, it's dream fight for me, fighting main event. And I'm just, I'm just two and a half year in the UFC, three year in the UFC, like, and, uh, and I, when I'm fighting main event with, uh, with, with guy like Rafa, former champion all this stuff yeah of course i'm i'm really happy and i and i make good camp you um you had a visa issue i guess i it seemed like it was very slow for everybody is that what it was it was just it was just clogged up in the pipes and very slow the last time when you when you when you had your visa issue yeah about visa i have always problem that's you know this I have like Kyrgyzstan passport and I, I want to come to America and many people from Kyrgyzstan come to America and stay there like illegal, you know, that's why I have a problem. That's why I have a problem for, for me. But don't they see you're a fighter and that you go back and that you come and you fight and go back? You think that they would see that? It's very, I'm sure that's very frustrating. I don't understand also because like I'm always come to immigration um when i when i give my passport he said oh you're famous oh you're you're ufc fighter oh nice nice okay go talk with officer and i stay in airport like in immigration two hour he 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 give me like 100 questions why i coming i can't use the guns how i how what guns i can use like all these shit questions always 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 do they ever refuse you entry at the airport or once you get to that point you're always okay always like they ask me like 100 question and after I go in. It's oh, okay. Well, I'm happy that this fight is very happening. We were just talking about your amazing uh, finish of Brad Riddell. Uh, that, 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 that kick uh, in the third round was beautiful. That was, that was an incredible fight. Yeah, that's happened sometime. You, <laughs> you sparred with him a lot, right? So it's a little awkward for you. Cause you guys sparred a lot. I didn't want to bring that up. That's painful. This little shit, Jimmy. Jimmy, how are you bringing that up? Raphael doesn't want to talk. That's his what? Friend. It was a win, though. He had a great win. Of course, he wants to talk about. It. He was. He was a great fight. Um, heavy body kicks. He was. He fought beautifully. It's a compliment. Yeah, that fight is. Hey, listen, we have enough friends in this business. But anyway, now you're fighting RDA, a former champion. I a lot of people are feeling that they're watching the way you fight. You're dipping back. You're hard to kick. You're all over the. They, he's going to try to use his Brazilian jiu-jitsu to smother you and neutralize your striking. Do you? You have great takedown defense. How much do you spend a lot of time on your back, or is it mostly just not getting to the floor with the wrestling? Um. <clears throat> No, I'm ready for everything. I'm training. I train. I'm training every day. Not only striking, you know. And uh, my my plan is like make a sweat, make a make a sweat, and like like a fish, and uh, just just if he try to take me down, and if if he take me down and I try to control, like I'm a fish, like like. <laughs> I I I go. I stand up like a fish, you know. I got you. Hard to hold. Oh, slippery. Hard to hold. Slippery, yeah. And, and you think that uh, maybe one or two more fights, and if they go your way, you can get a shot at the belt after that? Yeah, I think this is, this uh, this fight give me like, this is big step for, for this belt. This is big step. After this win, this is big step. But I'm still, I'm, I'm sure like, people who like top five, top four, he don't want to fight with me for sure because these guys won't fight with, with each other or with Conor McGregor. Everybody everybody wants that Conor McGregor fight. Yeah, yeah. everybody wants that. Uh, everybody wants that check. I mean, I don't blame people. Um, but uh, you and Gaethje, I think, would be uh, really nice. That I, I think that would be the fight that everybody would want to see. Um, and I think he would take that fight. Justin Gaethje seems like he'll fight anybody. 
I think too. I won. I won. I I'm more than happy for this fight after after Eddie. But we'll see. Now, hey, Raphael, what do you like to do when uh you have a day off? You don't want to train today. I'm having a day off. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the movies. I'm gonna do miniature golf. Jimmy, I think, is looking at the pickleball. What do you like to do <laughs> when you uh, have a day off? Oh. <laughs> uh, so if I have train week, like I never have day off. Like, but if I like, like a <clears throat> weekend, I like to stay with the family always. Like we're going to beach, we're going to some active, active weekend, you know, we're walking a lot, we're going to some new places. Like um, for me, it's like, first of all, what I do, I try to find some good place for eat. Yes. Oh, yeah, I know. like it's like some what I what I like it what I like. <clears throat> is this your first? Uh, this is your first main event. Yeah. And your first five first five round fight. Yeah. What What is the difference in preparation and also does being in the main event all the additional press you're doing does that change uh, your routine leading up to the fight? Oh, it's a big different. Now I understand what is it like came for three rounds and came for five rounds is a bit different. I, before, I don't know that. But now, like, it's more hard, yeah. It's more hard work, more extra work. Yeah. That's different. Just more hard. What's your guilty pleasure with the food? Do you like the food, like the pizza, the pasta, or do you like the dessert, the chocolate cake, the tiramisu, like uh, Khabib likes? What do, you, what do you like? What's What's worse? What do you like? I can't say I saw, I, I, I like something this this or this. No, I like everything because because when I when I start to eat, I eat like thirty thousand calories at like one time. This <laughs> this is for easy because I eat like past. I can eat pasta and after I can eat pizza. Yes, pizza. But pizza, I take a pizza like example, buffalo, big pizza with four cheese. I take one one uh, one kebab, one uh, big meat. And I put inside and I make a roll and I eat this all. And after I can eat pasta and after I can eat two cheesecake, like different cheesecake, make it together and like, you know, Jimmy, it's, I, and I, all I, this, I relate. After I drink Coca-Cola. I'm uh, <laughs> Jimmy, forget yeah. the greasy diet. Forget about all these, the Atkins, the keto. Look what you ever seen him in a fight. It works yeah. for him. It works for him, but you have to. So does that motivate you? Like when you're like, I'm going to train and win, and then I'm just going to go and eat what I want. How long do you give yourself to just eat whatever you want? A week, two weeks? Oh, that's close how I can. I like, uh, if I have fight like two months, okay, I start to diet. But before this, like I eat, I never think about diet or like stay in shape. No, I like my fat. It's okay. What's the hardest thing for you not to eat? Like, what's the hardest food to avoid? Oh, this is a, this is a bread. <laughs> bread, <laughs> bread. You know, this stuff with bread. I'm with you, buddy. Yeah, carbs. Every, all, a lot of carbs, fighters yeah. are like this. Because when, when we're fighting, when we're training for a fight, two months more, your diet has to be like this, right? Raphael yeah. has to be. So, hey, when it's time after a fight, whoo, the food tastes extra good, Jimmy. But sometimes your belly, sometimes your belly's small. So you try to eat and you're like, oh, but then your belly yeah. gets big. Yeah. Uh, after fight, I get like, like, a, like a dog, bro. I eat like a dog. Like Patty the, Patty the Batty does the same thing. <laughs> a lot oh, of yeah. fighters, yeah. Well, Raphael, you're one of the most uh, ex exciting guys uh, in the division. And I, I, I hope that you have a great fight on Saturday um, against uh, Dos Anjos. And I think everybody would love to see you and Justin or whoever else you fight next. But got to get through Raphael Dos Anjos first. So good luck on Saturday. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing this fight. You've looked uh, really, really great since, um, since you entered the UFC. Thank you so much. All right, Raphael. Take care, buddy. Congratulations on the main event. Thank you, guys. Take Thank care, you, buddy. Guys.
I love when I hear about guys who, who just love to eat too. I, I, I love that because for me, it's so hard. It's nice to see disciplined fighters have the same problems I do, except you guys can make yourselves work out and I can't. I think he was more, he got really into it. He would, and how about this? Now, shame on Ray Longo because he makes me, and he brings us up to people and he thinks it's weird. And my guys, they don't think, they, they, they follow suit. I'm pretty sure I seen Ray Janelle do this after and, I, I, you know, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure he did. I take my, um, the bread when we go out to eat, right? And I did this in the past. Uh, and I do this uh, usually at Italian places. And I get, I get the, um, I open it up. I cut it open, especially when it's warm. And I kind of take out the doughy part. And then I get the mozzarella sticks, right? And I get the mozzarella sticks and I put them in there. I make a little mozzarella stick, like sandwich. Oh. Sounds delicious. Longo thinks I'm crying. The guy's making sandwiches in a table with the mozzarella. I go, dude, what are you? What's the matter with you? What are you, the fun police? Huh? Well, my belly? All right, let's get back to some fights. <laughs> uh, yes, well, Volkanovski's devastating 50 to 45 win over Max. I mean, that just seals it. Uh, I mean, he's, he's... Hey, man. He's looking phenomenal. Like a little... I don't even want to say like a Mike Tyson because he's got his own style, but a stocky, hard. To, I like when he was in there. And listen, I'm not a big fan of guys talking if it's not, if it's not from the heart. Right. But when he was in there talking to him, like like yeah, I forgot what he was saying, so I don't want to misquote him. Like almost like come get it, like let's get at it. He was so confident he knew he was gonna win, dude. Max Holloway was the guy claiming like saying and then listen i love that Holloway. yes and he was the one saying i'm the best boxer looking away hitting calvin cater who we who everybody holds in high regard such a hard regard so it shows you that volkanovsky who definitely doesn't have the reach on him is just like come on like come on not like that yeah that's i know me, that's me just that's me being pent up at my house for over a week Arr! you know do I look like a cock? All right, listen, anyway. <laughs> anyway. How about a, about a round of applause for fucking uh, Brian Barbarena uh, over over Lawler? Again, that was, I, I, Lawler is just never in a boring fight. Like, I don't care what round it ends in, how it ends. Everything he does is fucking fun to watch. And Barbarena is just an animal. So that was a great fight. Um, the whole night was really good, except for the Sean O'Malley, Pedro Munoz uh, eye poke thing but it was legit uh pedro was not looking for a way out of there they had to give him certain eye drops so his eye could even open and he had a scratch on his cornea so i'm glad it wasn't more serious well, I, I definitely want to who would you say right before pedro who are you just saying about sean o'malley yes no but sean o'malley and pedro i want to talk about that brian barbarina and uh oh, yeah, Robbie yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i, I, I want to get a, a word in with that we had we had him on the show and that guy looks like a barbarian fights like a fucking barbarian but uh what a sweetheart he's a sweetheart of a guy so and so is robbie you know so they're nice yeah. guys. They're, they're both of them you'd be surprised are very very nice guys and robbie's gotten so technical and how he stays in the pocket he was throwing very i think he had the heavier hands in a sense where he was landing bigger shots and then came the barbarina elbows the elbows were making a fucking difference jimmy they made the difference in the exchanges and that's something to be said because he wasn't just being a barbarian, a, bar a barbarian, barbarian. Mm -hmm. He was, he was timing those elbows in close. And ultimately that made the big difference in the fight. And uh, well, uh, that, that, that's a fight that when you put it on paper, it, it, you think of, you're not surprised it went the way it went. You know what I mean? Right. You know, it's like, yo, there's, somebody would say, there's no way that could be a stinker. There's no way they, they fight 10 times. You're getting similar shit. So, uh, congrats to both guys. But congrats to Bob Reina because Robbie's stock does not go down. No. Robbie's a legend. It's not like, oh, boy, did you see his last performance? No. He was he could have won that fight. Sure. He was in that fight. And uh, Bob Reina just was a, a dog. And it might have came down to not who wanted it more, but in a sense, you know, he's fighting Bob Reina, and he's the legend, kind of. And yep. Bob Reina knows what he's going. You know what I mean? That might have been the extra oomph to add those elbows in. I don't know. That he's you know he's fighting a guy that probably came up fighting. Robbie's an older guy now. I, you know what I mean? Is he how old is he now, Robbie? Fuck. Uh, I want to say thirty eight. Am I crazy? 
30, 40. He's 40 years old. Is he 40? Wow. I just talked to him uh, with Phoenix. Uh, he, he, he was uh, 40 fucking years old. Yeah, he wow. Looks good. He looks good, Jimmy. Yeah, he does. Looks great. Um, but, uh, and then you went into the, uh, first of all, Pedro Munoz, I feel bad for him because even the announcers, and no, no discredit to Joe and those guys because, you know, they might have been like, oh, it looks like it was kind of just hardly hit him. All right, dude, you see him that night, dude, his eye's still shut. That thing, you don't know when something goes yeah. in the eye, you really don't know. Pedro Munoz is never a guy to, uh, he's never a guy to look for a way out. He's never been a guy. He's always, his toughness is one of his attributes, you know? So I don't, I 100% don't believe he was looking for a way out. You know what I mean? It's easy to say fight with one eye. Right. Unless you're Michael Bisping, you have no right to say that. And uh, that's it. I, I And it's weird. Oh, by the way, let's address a drunken Henry Shahudo backstage challenging Sean O'Malley and talking to Volkanovski. I don't know what he said to Volkanovski, but dude, it's a bad look. This is the what thing. I don't mind him being the king of cringe and doing his thing. Do your thing, dude. Get a fight. You, and you're a great fighter. And he's great. a great teacher. I yep. like watching some of his Instagram stuff where he's teaching an inside trip. I, I like the inside trip. I like the way he teaches. But now listen, Sean O'Malley, very confident. The fight went weird. It's not really his fault. I mean, shit happens. I mean, he, it happens, you know. Uh, but, you know, he's backstage getting interviewed. You really want to you want to shit on the guy's parade no matter what he's dealing with. You want to jump in and, hey, you know, I think you absolutely suck. I'll fight. Hey, dude, really, dude? Because obviously you had a couple. Of, I'm not saying you're drunk, but you obviously have a couple in you. So you're probably feeling good. You probably signed some autographs tonight. People are probably coming up to you. I understand. I get it. You're used to the limelight. You're the fucking... How, you're, you're, you're a champion how many times over? You're an Olympic champion. But, you know, hey, fuck off when it's not your night. Have the kid, let the kid have his night. You might want to, you know what I'm saying? You know, if you're going to do it, do it a little classy. You don't be on the side. I heard they had to remove him from backstage. I mean, what the fuck? I don't know. Maybe I'm off. I like Henry. Henry's a nice guy. Henry. Henry chose to retire in the, in the cage. He chose to step down. I, it's his choice. I wish he didn't because I enjoy watching him. But then just to kind of go out and be this guy all the time. It's like, uh, well, but dude, you're heckling the guy backstage. Who was he heckling? He was, dude, Sean O'Malley's doing an interview. Yeah. And he interviewed him and he goes, no, go ahead. He's, he's like, you'll bend the knee and you'll, I think you'd absolutely. Suck. And then the guy, Sean's like, are you serious? Because he's like, one, you, you know, you're drunk. And two, you're like, you, you know, you look fat. <laughs> he's just, Sean's like, are you serious? You look like you're training. You know, I, Mally's not going to take a payday with a fight neck guy? Of course he would. But, like, I don't know, dude. I mean, come on. Man. Sure, I mean, Henry, we all like to have a good time. But let these kids have their moments. What the fuck are you doing? Fuck off with that. Uh, yeah. And I like Henry, but, you know. Yeah, on. it's just stop. I, I mean, look, it obviously wasn't a night that O'Malley wanted either. Um, You know. I mean, listen, he, well, I mean, you know, I don't know. But anyway, it's just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> And I like him, and I like Eric, the coach. <laughs> coach Eric with the glasses. I don't know. Anyway, Jimmy, you know, I usually stick up for the short people. And I get a text. Oh, did uh, a message from somebody. Oh, did Volkanovski win one of those rounds? Yeah, asshole. He did fucking phenomenal. What do you think? I hate the guy. I like the guy. 50 to 45, yeah. But he lost the second fight. He lost it. So, dude, they had me on that countdown special saying of the day, you know. So it's like, I'm sure... I, you know, it doesn't mean I hate the guy. I fucking like like the guy. I like Max also. I call it how I see it. I don't give a yeah. fuck. You know, I have no horse in the fucking race. Yeah, you know? but the bottom, even Dana said at the end, does anybody actually think that Ma Alex won that fight? Everyone thought that he lost it. So people who say that you're being anti him, he was amazing against Max in this third fight. Um, the most impressive he's looked, it, you know, of course. Dude, you know what I, it bothers me actually because I, I, I really like Volk. Volk's a nice guy, Volkanovski. He yeah. comes on the show. He's very polite. He handles himself like a man. Like, you know what I mean? Like the way a fighter should handle himself. Like he just a champion. He's confident. He's dude, I love it. Dude, that guy walked in that cage knowing he's winning. And that's coming off a fight where we all thought he lost. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's not, not I mean, actually, no, it's not. It's coming off a fight with Max where we thought he lost, but he's one. He's he's look, he's look he he's you've seen growth since then. If you look at his other fights, especially when he did the pause army. He made him more of a zombie. He did, yeah. And against surviving that third round against Ortega, that choke, I mean, that's one of the most impressive things I've seen anybody do in the cage.
I think he remembered that he doesn't have a neck and he got out of there. No, I'm only kidding. Listen, but he's fucking the kid all day. <laughs> I'm glad your knees feel better. Jimmy, is it the, uh, blame the, blame the, blame the kid all be out of the place. You are a stinker. But you always point out when I have a bad joke. Listen to me, Jimmy. I miss you. Uh, I miss you too. We, we talked about Israel. We talked about pretty much everybody. Yeah, yeah we, we covered the. We went in a crazy order. I think we. Yeah, that's we fine. Went. I prefer that anyway. I don't need someone to go down. I don't need two guys. Uh, by the way, they were suggesting things for us to possibly do on certain days of the week, and one of the suggestions that we got it said "tail of the tape." I told them I am not saying "tail of the tape." Everyone says that. Well, let's go over the tail of the tape. We're not saying the fucking tail of the tape ever. If that was someone's name, I wouldn't say it. If you, if this guy came on, his name was Michael tail of the tape. I would just call him Michael. I'm not saying tail of the tape. They have to say that when the fight's happening, that's, that's an announcer thing to do. I like to have a good time. Jimmy, too. uh, I'm back. I took, yes. a, I took one day off from the show. That's it. And uh, I'm fucking back. And I, it's good because I'm not going to like get a little stir crazy, Jimmy. No, I understand. You know, I there's do. There's so it. much VR you could play. But I'll tell you, I'm, I am playing it. And that's when I ice my leg because it's the best time to ice your leg because you're not thinking about the fucking cold ass fucking thing. In your right. Head. Like you're thinking about murking fools, which I think about. Well, I'm looking. When, when is your next one, Matt? When are you doing your next one, November? I'm going to do that probably in October. Okay. So you'll be healed up probably by Thanksgiving or close to it. My wife's probably going to get another kickboxing match in September. And then uh, around, around close. So yeah, listen, man. We like to live our lives here in the Sarahs. And I'm getting two new knees, man. Two new knees. I plan on doing a video when I turn 50. And just being like, yo, look at me training. I want a video of me just strangling and comoring motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Just to be like, look. I'm still 50 yet dangerous. That will be my hashtag. But I'm not there yet, Jimmy. I'm 48. Don't round it up. 50 and dangerous. Thank you, Jimmy. Jimmy. Yes. Oh, let me introduce you to my friend Sunlight. Are you gonna Jimmy? Are you gonna get some like, get some sun, Jimmy? I'm in a room that's surrounded by light. I think that's why I look so pale. I'm extra tan though. Cause I've been, I I, all I've been doing is laying out. No, but I look, I look white as in uh, like unhealthy white. Like I, I look like a fluorescent bulb. I understand that. Just right next to each other. Like, we were right next to each other. I go, Jimmy, put your arm up. And we can put your arm right next to mine. Oh, That's the light. Hold That's on. The light. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Let me get some sunglasses. <laughs> Jimmy, I'll fuck it around. Let's plug something. I miss you, my buddy. I miss you. Tonight, I'm in New York at the Fat Black Pussycat, uh, December 22nd, 23rd. Uh, maybe I'll see San Hagen when I'm up in, uh, in fucking uh, Denver. Maybe he'll come to the show. I also have uh, Rochester coming up. I have... Rhode Island coming up, and I have Minneapolis coming up. Jimmy. Yes, buddy. You can find me uh, basically at my house. I ain't doing shit. But listen, you know, I know what I might do now since I ain't doing shit. I might follow up on that whole voice acting venture I was trying to get into, and then I put made one call, and then I, I might have to send something back. I ain't lying to you. Oh. Jimmy, I'm too lax with my life. Did yeah, Mac. But, but isn't get on Twitch. Like, but isn't this kind of like retirement for me, Jimmy? Get on Twitch. I got my, I got my Sarah BJJ in Huntington if you want to learn jiu-jitsu and hang out with me. Yeah. People show up there. This other guy showed up the other day. His name is Luke. I remember that because I like Star Wars. And he had one co- eyebrow that was a different color. And he had a, a shirt that was Star Wars or something. And so I started talking some geek shit about him. And he's like, man, I, I, just, I just can't believe you're here. And I go, man, dude, my name's on the fucking wall, dude. I didn't say that. I didn't do that. Yeah, of course. Sir. I'm like, dude, I said my name's on the wall. I said it happened, you know? And he's like, yeah. So now, now this guy can hang out with me and we can talk movies and I can teach him all blocks. Jimmy, you got to keep life simple. More, Jimmy, is not better. But having, having said that, I just ordered cornhole for my backyard. Do you like cornhole? Cornhole? You know what that is? Is that the thing where you throw sandbags? Yeah, it's like sandbags. It's I a horrible it. name. It's an awful name. And I would only like it if people played it with grenades. <laughs> I don't like I, it. I, I, I get so shocked at the negativity that it makes me, <laughs> it just, it shocks me. I just don't like that the game. Point where you're a, it's such a fun game. Why are you hating that game? I, I just can don't understand like hating it. the name. The name is, the name is, it almost sounds dirty. Yeah. Corno. Yeah. I don't but, like it. but it's a fun game, Jimmy. I just don't enjoy it. Well, anyway, listen, we're not going to, uh, 
Fuck it. Oh, you're not good at getting them in. And then you got to, you can sometimes knock theirs off the thing. Yeah, yeah. What no, you, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, I like to stick to sh- uh, shoe horns. I play a little chess. Horseshoes. Horseshoes. Or shoe horns. <laughs> That's shoe horns is a horrible game. Yeah, I don't think that's a fun terrible. game at all. But uh, horseshoes can't be fun. Jimmy, again, we could have ended a couple of minutes ago, and it wouldn't have changed the show. But I do miss you. Is this show? Can I listen to me? Don't if it goes to voice. I'm gonna uh, between now and the weekend, you might get a call. I'm I'll answer it. You might get a Facetime. Yep. Just do the right thing. All right, buddy. Like, I'll talk to you soon, Jimmy, and I miss you and love you. I miss you too, but I love Matt Sarah. I'll talk to you this weekend. Bye.